Firecracker has always been a contentious card in Clash Royale, but why? What could possibly make a 3 elixir common card with less health than a wall breaker the most annoying card in Clash Royale, even when its rates are average to below average? Well, this card gives a low number of hit points per elixir, so it has to make up for that in other ways. And when that's the case, you end up in a situation where if you have the right cards, it's very easy to counter, but if you don't, then it ends up being a nightmare to deal with. Over time, Supercell typically makes annoying cards like this at least a little more bearable, if not perfect, but in the Firecracker's case, they seem to only make it worse. Part of the problem is that the community is never happy with the state it's in, leading to players pressuring the devs to make changes not necessary, which they sometimes oblige to. Then later, they would try to make it viable again via a different approach, which only repeated the cycle. There's a lot to go over, so without any further ado, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the Firecracker's history, see how it was on launch, cover the balance changes it's received, and explain how it ended up becoming one of the, if not the most game-breakingly overpowered and annoying cards in Clash Royale history. Before Firecracker was even released, it had gone through a few pre-release adjustments. In the early phases of development, this card's attack was sporadic and could never really hit what you wanted. It was clunky and hard to use, but one thing to notice is that her attacks apparently were going to deal knockback, which is crazy because on top of her attack, she would recoil. Dealing knockback and recoiling would have made it even more difficult than it already was for enemy troops to approach her. The recoil was a staple feature of this card that did make it into the final version. Firecracker was small, but had such a big attack that the force of it knocked her back. The only other card with a recoil attack was Sparky, who was a legendary, and even in that case, it only pushed her back three-fourths of a tile, unlike the Firecracker, whose recoil pushed her back two tiles. Before she got the name Firecracker, she was known as the Rocketeer, but the devs explained that the name didn't quite feel right. Her attack was eventually changed to have one main burst of damage on a targeted troop, then having that split into a string of smaller projectiles spread over a wide range, splashing onto everything in any one of those paths. There were five small projectiles, and each one dealt one-fifth of the damage from the original burst. This was a very unique style of attack, because the attack would only pierce through troops once its main attack reached its target. Not only was it cheap, but it could attack air, unlike the bowler, and her projectile had a much wider radius than Magic Archer. Of course, her main disadvantage was that she died to arrows. This meant your opponent could save their arrows for this card, which might force you to adapt by including other cards to bait out that spell. However, she could at least survive a log unlike a princess, because she had the same amount of health as an archer. You might have recognized if you're at all familiar with Supercell games that this card looks strangely reminiscent of an archer, which is on purpose. According to her lore by the company, she was an archer, but didn't like being an archer, so she left archer school and came across the rascals. They don't really explain what exactly happened when she met the rascals, but the whole idea behind this card was clear. She's a renegade, and not just because Supercell didn't feel like making a whole new design. Is that why they made her a common though? Just because she was kind of the same troop as an archer? With her unique attack style and recoil, she seemed way more complex than most cards, deserving at least epic status. Well, we know it probably wasn't because of the archer's relationship, because the wallbreakers and bomber were different rarities even though they were based on the same troop. You see, the main reason Firecracker was common was because there just hadn't been any commons for a long time. This card came out in January 2020, and the last time a common card had been released prior to this was the Royal Recruits in July 2018. Sometimes when a certain card rarity hasn't been released in a while, they just make a new card a different rarity than it would have been otherwise. The team also admitted that there were so many cards in the game now that each new card had to have something special and unique to add to the game. But the problem was that if you followed that threshold, no card would ever be common again since they're supposed to be very simple, basic, and easy to understand. Seth, the community manager, even put out a tweet saying that this card was a quote, princess for the people, a common alternative to princess or magic archer. They simply wanted complex mechanics like this to be more accessible. You can also see from this tweet that the Firecracker's Firework is an air defense from Clash of Clans. If rarity was determined by how much effort was put into a card, I can understand the common rarity since everything about this card is borrowed. Even its attack was just taken from a Brawl Stars character. Not to diss on Supercell or anything, this is a special troop that adds something valuable and it's nice to make cards common to make it easier for players to level up when they just as easily could have made it epic or legendary, essentially locking it behind a paywall or a year of grinding. Her projectile range was so long that it could actually hit buildings sitting behind a princess tower like spawners or elixir pump. This was cool because not many cards could hit back there. However, this super long projectile range was a double-edged sword because it made it easy to activate the king tower against. In Clash Royale, you may know that even if you deal a sliver of damage to your opponent's king tower, it will activate, therefore becoming a permanent additional defense, which you do not want. 
If your opponent has one of a few select cards, then they can activate their King Tower if you have one of a different selection of cards. However, in the Firecracker's case, the opponent could place any troop in a spot angled perfectly between the Firecracker and their King Tower, and the Firecracker would target onto it, with its splash reaching just far enough to set it off. There was no safe deck to go against where you didn't have to worry about this, which was certainly a major disadvantage. Certain wind conditions that relied on the King Tower not being activated, like Graveyard, would never be able to work with it because of this fact alone. Fun fact, in 2v2, since the towers are a bit closer together, the King Tower will always get hit by a Firecracker attack if its main attack hits the Princess Tower, even if the opponent does nothing. As we already discussed, her health was a major weakness, but another weakness was her hit speed attacking only once every 3 seconds, the same as a Princess. She wasn't great in a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions. You would want to use her a lot against slow, heavy beatdown pushes, especially when they had well-protected support units. She was a solid alternative to cards like Bomber, Princess, and even Wizard. She had the same vulnerabilities, but dealt a lot more damage and was just as good, if not better than the competition. Especially against something like Barbarian Hut, where she would never cross the river because her recoil would cause her to stay on defense and the Barbarians would never catch or deal any damage to her. The recoil was definitely the main gimmick, and players were pretty quick to call Firecracker the most annoying card in the game because of this. But why exactly? Well, for starters, a lot of cards had a lot of trouble killing it because it would always propel itself out of range. Since a Firecracker knocks itself back two tiles per attack, that means if a card was just about to attack it but it propelled itself away, it would take a full two seconds for a card with a medium movement speed to catch up, or one and a half seconds for a fast card, which makes a significant difference. This recoil also made it very unpredictable. If you were using a spell with a small radius, it might be hard to predict exactly where the firecracker is going to be by the time the spell lands. Sometimes it doesn't attack when you think it will, and vice versa. The problem here was that it was much harder to counter than it was to play. Even though you kind of had to angle it right to maximize its value, the unpredictability and constant movement made it a nightmare to play against if you didn't have an easy spell. What made it even worse was that she had an 8.5 tile sight range, which is longer than most troops, especially for a non-building targeting troop. Usually a longer sight range is a bad thing, but in this case it only contributed to the firecracker's annoyingness, because even if she was walking down an empty lane and there was action in the opposite lane, she would walk over and assist on defense. This was certainly a complicated card, which was going to make for a messy launch. Firecracker was officially released on January 6th, 2020, and it did not set a good tone for the year because it was instantly a very hated card. Taking a look at the stats about a week after launch, you can see it was actually a top 10 card in challenges. But just a few days later, its rates fell to about average. Part of this can be attributed to new card hype. Obviously, everyone is going to want to try the new card, which can artificially boost usage in the beginning. But this really goes back to what I said about this card being easy to play but difficult to counter. This card could get a lot of value if players didn't know how to properly counter it, and since most players didn't know how to properly counter it since it was brand new, it attracted a lot of usage. Once players quickly adapted, it lost a lot of its flair. It reminded me a lot of the Wizard situation when the game first came out. Wizard was never really that good of a card, but when the game first came out, he was easy to use and not so easy to counter, which made him a very popular choice. But he very quickly died down before the beta period even ended and wasn't able to be relevant again despite receiving numerous buffs beyond that point just because of how bad he truly was. Despite being not as good as initially thought though, it was still a decent card that could be very useful. The most popular deck you saw her in right away was this Hog Rider Cycle deck, which was very unexpected because your opponent would almost certainly activate their King Tower if you used her, and then it would assist in taking out future Hog Riders. She was expected to thrive in Siege decks, where activating the King didn't matter. The beauty of this deck was that it was built in a way that made it difficult for the opponent to exploit its weakness because you would typically always play a Hog Rider in front of the Firecracker before it crossed the bridge. There were basically three options when it came to defending a Hog-Firecracker combo. You activate the King Tower, which gives the Hog and Firecracker more time to deal damage to the tower. You defend the Firecracker, which gives the Hog more time to attack the tower. Or you defend the Hog and the Firecracker's attack splashes onto your defense and the tower. It was a tricky combo to deal with. Although she seemed fair and balanced in competitive play as pro players learned to counter her properly, you have to remember not every player is created equal. She was tricky to counter, easy to play, and a common card which is a textbook recipe for a mid-ladder menace, a card that thrives in mid to lower areas of ladder despite being balanced or even weak in competitive play. These are some of the loudest players in the Clash community, and they're not advocating for changes based on rates and data, but rather on what they personally experience. Now, it wasn't as bad as something like Wizard or Witch, since overleveling Firecracker didn't cause any significant interaction changes, but regardless of level, she was annoying. 
However, by Marge, she was sometimes being replaced by Magic Archer. Despite her uniqueness, she was in a competitive niche. There were a lot of 3-4 to four Elixir ranged cards that filled a similar purpose, so she was very often going to have trouble standing out even when she provided adequate value. Magic Archer was a decent replacement because he could also pierce through Hog Defenders and hit the tower, while dealing more damage per second, survive arrows, and not have the disadvantage of being easy to activate King Towers against. It gave you the freedom to just use it on defense and not have to properly support it once it went across the bridge. Regardless of the Magic Archer's advantages though, Firecracker was still the primary pick for this deck. It's just worth acknowledging how replaceable she was. Although it seemed like she was destined to be a one-deck wonder, she would eventually be integrated into other decks around May. This Royal Hogs deck was on the rise, where Firecracker was useful for the same reason she was useful in regular Hog Rider decks. She was finally securing her place in these Hog decks as a Swarm Clear and Secondary Tower damage source. In the same month, this Firecracker Royal Giant deck also rose, which is the type of deck I think most people were expecting this card to be viable in originally. The amount of bonus tower damage you could get was crazy. She was practically a secondary win condition. Firecracker was in an excellent position. It was seen with a variety of win conditions in a variety of decks, and her raids were fine. At least, until June. Although it wouldn't get a direct nerf, the two spells it was almost always seen with, Earthquake and Royal Delivery, would. Following those changes, the Hog and Royal Hog decks Firecracker was commonly seen in were dissipating. However, Royal Giant was able to adapt with it nicely, with Firecracker appearing in multiple new variants. So although Hog decks with Firecracker were played less, Firecracker's individual rates actually had an upsurge. It was definitely one of the best cards in its niche now. It even started to see some play with Mortar. However, this boost in performance seems to tip the card over the edge because the following month, Firecracker would receive a nerf, which seems absurd just from analyzing its stats. This card consistently had average rates for months, but then they rise to slightly above average for not even a month and it gets the nerf hammer? Seth had even exclaimed in the past that they had to be cautious about not nerfing cards that were strong for one month only, and this was clearly the case with Firecracker. I'm focusing on competitive stats only because that's typically the environment cards are used at their fullest potential and those are the stats Supercell almost always balance off of, but this case may have been one of the few rare exceptions. You see, the most popular win conditions Firecracker worked best with, Royal Giant and Hog Rider, were much more popular in low areas of ladder than challenges. So if you were in some of these lower ranges, you'd go against Firecracker way more than 13% of the time. I don't have the exact stats for every specific area of ladder during this time, but even generally you can see the distinction. The community was hounding for nerf, saying that they should reduce its recoil distance or make it die to log. It didn't matter if it was statistically balanced and had fair counterplay. It was annoying. So Supercell gave in and announced they would reduce its recoil distance from 2 to 1.5 tiles, making it easier for melee cards to catch her. 1.5 tiles is a little less than the range of a melee long card, so if you place the melee long card right on top of it, it wouldn't be able to blast itself out of range anymore. This was a pretty big nerf, but the community loved it. Everyone was so tired of seeing Firecracker that it wasn't going to bother people if she became unviable. This change would go live on July 7th, and you pretty quickly saw a massive drop in popularity following it. She relied so heavily on that recoil, so it being reduced by 25% made her die in a lot of situations she would have been fine in before. The change could have been fine if they had compensated by buffing a different stat, but it seems like they wanted to appease the player base more than properly balancing it. For the remainder of 2020, its use rate remains between 2-3% with a very poor win rate and it wouldn't receive any more balance changes this year. It rarely appeared in the top deck in the latter half of 2020. The only one I could find was this Mortar one in August that we saw back in June, but even in this case, the dominant variant was running Musketeer instead of Firecracker. Despite it underperforming since the July nerf, not only were people not asking for buffs, but further nerfs. With people's hatred of her being so strong, it deterred Supercell from applying any buffs, no matter how much she may have needed them. And because of that, her future was looking bleak. 2021 started off like the end of 2020, low use in win rates and struggling to reach the top deck list. She was still appearing occasionally with Mortar, but it couldn't hold its place long. Although it seemed like this year was just going to be a continuation of 2020, things would take an interesting turn. Starting around April, you began to see a small comeback of Hog Earthquake Firecracker decks sparked by an Earthquake rework in February that made it deal more damage to buildings. The Firecracker recoil didn't matter as much when it came to supporting the Hog Rider on offense, but ever since that devastating Earthquake nerf in June 2020, it hadn't been able to play its part in keeping that deck viable. Now since it was better at shredding buildings, this deck was able to work again. 
It wouldn't stop there though, because in June 2021, we saw the release of the Goblin Drill, which was very influential on release, and Firecracker became a very popular synergizer to it thanks to being able to keep defending troops near the tower for a prolonged period of time. For a brief period, this Goblin Drill deck was the most used deck in the entire game. It was surprising to see Firecracker be a part of the most played deck in the game considering it was barely even able to make it into the top 20 list for almost a year now. Its individual rates had noticeably risen thanks to this. Although it wouldn't see too much play with Goblin Drill after it was nerfed, it continued to see plenty of use in Hog Earthquake, which would remain in the top deck list for the foreseeable future. With Earthquake in a more stable position, this deck was able to thrive without worry of the nerf hammer. It's kind of interesting to think about how Earthquake, a spell that's used to take down buildings, seemingly completely disconnected from Firecracker, can be directly responsible as to how Firecracker performs. But when you think about how this deck functions, it all makes sense. It's all about clearing a path for the Hog Rider. The Earthquake clears the buildings, the Valkyrie or Knight tanks whatever is meant for the Hog, and the Firecracker takes care of defensive swarms and or whittle down whatever other defense is there while helping to take down the tower directly. If one of those three cards can't do their job, the whole deck falls apart. Taking a look at the top 200 decks during the middle of October 2021, Firecracker was used in 10 total, 9 of which were this exact variant of Hog Cycle. It was on shaky grounds, but it could have been worse. The rates had been trickling down ever since the Goblin Drill peak, but it seemed like the hatred towards this card was only increasing. There were so many calls for nerfs citing how unpredictable it was and how it was still so difficult to counter if you didn't have arrows. One thing players pointed out as being especially frustrating was when she propelled herself into the opposite lane while attacking something, then walked back into the lane she was originally in after finishing, because that's not what a card is supposed to do. If we take a look at the stats in November 2021, we can see in Grand Challenges her rates were quite bad, but in Ladder she was seeing a lot more success. Firecracker was a mid-ladder menace, and that's an incredibly ugly spot to be in. But despite the pressure on Supercell to do something, they would end up doing nothing at all. Well, except for tweeting out a sarcastic remark reminding players there was an easy way if she really was that bad, but players did not take that well. In all of 2021, Firecracker would receive absolutely no balance changes, but in December, both the Fire Spirit and Tesla would get nerfed, hurting the Firecracker's best deck. Going into 2022, you still saw this deck getting some decent play, but it wasn't performing nearly as well anymore. And if the December nerfs weren't enough, the Valkyrie and Earthquake would get nerfed the following April. That was pretty much the final nail in the coffin for this deck, and thus the Firecracker. At least for now. The meta was shifting for good now. It wasn't just one card holding her back that would be fixed in a few months. She was in wizard territory, along with the other forgotten mid ladder menaces, having one of the lowest win rates in the game being a solid bottom 5 card. She was no longer useful, she had no place. All because she was too annoying. If they had just never reduced her recoil, she'd probably still be a healthy card, at least stat-wise. But even now at her worst, possibly ever, there were still calls for nerfs. A poll I found from June 2022 found the majority of players wanted her to stay the same or get nerfed. Not even a rework. She was bad, and people were happy about that. And just to be clear, here are her stats from the day the poll was taken. She was definitely going to need some sort of rework to make people happy. A lot of people have been requesting for her to die to the log, so perhaps they could have decreased her health in exchange for some extra damage or a faster attack, but I think that would have only made her more obnoxious to players who didn't have that spell. Plus, if she could survive the log by being one level higher, overleveling would be more of an issue. There wasn't going to be a move that would make everyone happy, so for the second full year, Firecracker would receive absolutely no balance changes, remaining unviable. The hope for Firecracker had really died down by now. It was in the same position as Wizard and Witch, good for casual players, only useful when overleveled, and would be tossed aside for good when the player reached a certain point. Wizard and Witch had gone years without a balance change, so there was no reason to believe Firecracker wouldn't suffer the same fate. But shockingly, in February 2023, out of the blue, this card would appear in the balance changes for the first time in nearly three years. This change was simply decreasing its first hit attack time by 4 tenths of a second. This buff was a huge deal. Being able to land that first shot 40% faster would help so much when supporting something like Hog on offense. Shooting 4 tenths of a second faster meant 4 tenths of a second less reaction time for the opponent. Supercell explains that this was to help fix an issue where it would freeze out when facing multiple units. I didn't really talk about this, but this was another major issue since day one. You see, Firecracker wasn't just annoying to play against, but also annoying to play. 
You can find a lot of old replays of people upset that their firecrackers would just stand there for several seconds not shooting a single thing. This happened because her target died right before she was about to attack, causing her to retarget onto another target, but each time this happened, her first hit attack time was reset. This would be good if she was a single target unit, but she obviously wasn't. Even if her main target died, her shot could have helped deal with surrounding units. Firecracker wasn't the only card with this retargeting mechanic, but it was abundantly more obvious and detrimental in her case because she had one of the slowest first hit attacks in the game. She actually had the slowest first hit attack for any splash troop besides Sparky whom she was tied with, which is why this buff was probably the best buff they could have given it. Expectedly, players were not happy at this announcement. The feedback was overwhelmingly negative, but it was nice to see the balancing team try something and not just let it rot like its mid-ladder companions. Players braced for the worst, but after a short period of hype, it was performing poorly again. It was certainly still much better than before though. You really only saw her in a few hog cycle decks, including the old Valkyrie Earthquake one. Most people considered Firecracker to be a solid card now despite the underperformance. It was partially bad timing because the archers were overbuffed at the same time which heavily increased their prominence, so you saw them used in a lot of siege decks that perhaps would have run Firecracker if there wasn't a similar, more appealing option. Plus, this also had the effect of making arrows insanely popular, so more people than usual had a hard counter ready to go. Not to mention, one of the side effects of this firecracker buff actually hurt it in a way. Being that you had a bigger window of opportunity as a defender to force it to attack your troop positioned in a way to make the attack activate your king tower. Even after the April balance changes though, which fixed the archer's issue by ironically giving it the opposite change firecracker had just received, you weren't seeing a ton of firecracker play. The environment still just wasn't quite suited for her. You saw her occasionally in the top 200, but she wasn't quite finding her place. At least until June 2023, which would perhaps be the most eventful month for Firecracker in Clash Royale history. Firstly, she would receive another balance change, which would be decreasing her first at attack time by another 20th of a second. Which sounds pointless, and in most situations you would never notice the difference, but in this case it meant a lot because now when Firecracker was going against the enemy tower, she would always get a hit in before she died, whereas before, that hit was determined on whether you were true red or true blue. Remember, each Firecracker hit dealt more damage to towers than a lightning spell, so whether it was able to get that hit or not was a big deal. Following the balance changes, this card had a staggering rise in usage mostly appearing in this Hog Earthquake deck that also included the Mighty Miner. Not only was this a very popular deck, but it became the most used deck in Clash Royale, especially if you include both variants. It wasn't seen too heavily outside of this deck, but it certainly had a lot more potential now. The future was looking bright, but just when things were looking steady, Supercell pulled a Supercell. Just a few weeks after this buff, Clash Royale would implement a game-changing feature, Evolutions. Certain cards would now be given new special abilities and stat bonuses to help spice up the game. And what better card to pick to be the first one to receive this than the card everybody has been calling the most annoying card in Clash Royale for over three years. That's right, on June 19th, 2023, everyone's favorite pink-haired menace was getting a massive upgrade. You would only get to play an Evolved Firecracker for every two regular ones you played, but it was very worth it. Firstly, on top of the regular damage it dealt, each attack left one big and five small circular areas that dealt damage over time, similar to Poison. The big one was 2.5 tiles big, the same as a Zap spell, and dealt 510 damage over a period of 2.5 seconds. The five small ones were half the size, dealt the same damage per second, but only lasted 2 seconds, meaning each totaled 408 damage. Basically, it was between arrows and fireball in terms of damage. This is an absurd amount of extra damage, so these spark auras would only deal 30% of their total damage to towers, but that's still 180 extra damage if the big spark touches the tower and 140 for each little spark. These extra spark auras were the big special ability this evolution had going for it, but that was far from all it got. On top of this, its health was increased by 43% to just about what a royal delivery deals, meaning it no longer died to arrows. And finally, its recoil distance was increased back to two tiles, so she'd be just as obnoxious to catch as in the good old days. Now, of course, there's the caveat that you can only use one evolution per deck, and there were three others launching beside it, but evolved barbarians or skeletons upgrades weren't even close to this. To break it down, they gave a previously healthy card a ton of extra damage, a ton of extra health, and reverted the change that made it from great to meh. All for the card that's been widely regarded as the most annoying card in the game. Surely this is the recipe for a happy player base.
Firecracker Royale was frustrating players to no end. After years of players ridiculing this card and kicking her while she's down, everyone was now bowing to her. She was unstoppable. I don't think I've ever seen more calls for an emergency nerf than I did in this case. Players were leaving the game in droves. The user could drop a firecracker which would shoot something near the opponent's tower in one second which would splash onto the tower dealing upwards of 800 damage per shot at level 14. More than a charging battle ram. It's hard to compare it to other broken cards in the past since you had to play the regular version to get to it, but I think it's safe to say Firecracker during this era ranks as being one of the most overpowered cards in Clash Royale history. She was appearing with so many win conditions, from Hog Rider, to Royal Hogs, to Miner, to Goblin Drill, to Mortar. Pretty much any fast cycle deck benefited from this evolution. I even found this interesting deck with the Monk and no win condition reached the top 200. At this point, Evolved Firecracker was a win condition. No, literally, it was. The fact it was a primary source of tower damage in the decks it was in and it was able to consistently get that damage makes it by definition a win condition. Even the official Clash Royale esports account tweeted a joke asking which support card was best to go with her. There was never a better way to spend 3 elixir than right now. For two grueling weeks, this was the situation. Until June 30th, where we would finally get balance changes. There were so many paths to choose. They could decrease the sparks damage on crown towers, make the recoil back to normal, or let it die to arrows. But they didn't go with any of these. Instead, they opted to increase its first hit attack by 1 20th of a second, which applied to the regular and evolved version. Now, I did actually skip over one important thing because I wanted to focus on the power of the evolved Firecracker. Going back to the same day the evolution was released, the normal Firecracker's first hit attack time was reverted back to 6 tenths of a second, which was unusual because why would you revert something that was meant to fix a consistency issue? I looked into it and couldn't find it mentioned in any official patch notes, which suggests this change was implemented by accident. Stuff like this has happened before and it's usually fixed quickly, but now since Firecracker was the strongest card in the game, it wasn't a great time to fix a change that would make it even stronger than it already was. But they couldn't just leave this inconsistency, so they fixed it in a different way. The consistency was fixed by making the tower always hit the firecracker first instead of never. It was an alright change, but so small considering the magnum power of this beast. These balance changes were unscheduled and were really just meant to tone things down a bit while they found a proper way to balance it. But this unfortunately meant another month of firecracker royale. This was a very unfun time to be playing the game. Firecracker made a lot of people upset at just the concept of evolutions in general, because evolutions at their core are meant to be this way. Maybe not this powerful, but with no downsides compared to just playing the normal card, it meant a stronger, more annoying Firecracker was always going to exist without a complete overhaul to the feature. CRL was going on in July, and every single match was using the same few evolutions, and it got really repetitive just seeing the same few cards being used over and over. There was a huge lack of diversity, and Evolved Firecracker specifically just seemed to lower the skill cap. It wasn't exactly clear what Supercell wanted to see from this feature, but what was clear was that Firecracker was ruining the game. So in the next set of balance changes, in August 2023, Supercell would come down hard. So originally there was a planned set of nerfs which involved decreasing the big and small spark durations by half a second and decreasing its hit points by 7%. The amount of damage these sparks did to towers seemed to be the biggest issue and there was really no reason for her to have as much health as she did. The team was open to feedback on these nerfs and boy did they get a lot. They ended up going with a completely different set of nerfs after reading countless comments. The health decrease was changed from 7 to 9% thanks to a reddit post that garnered thousands of upvotes detailing a lot of major interaction changes that would happen if this happened. Although arrows still wouldn't be enough, there were still a lot of cards that would be better against it. And instead of reducing the spark duration, they changed it so that multiple sparks couldn't deal damage to the same enemy at the same time. Which was huge considering when used against a tower, you could easily have 3-4 to four of these on it at once. That's a 66-75% to 75 total damage decrease from sparks. And finally, to match the change it had received almost exactly 3 years prior, its pushback range was decreased from 2 to 1.5 tiles because it was so, so annoying. 
I actually think it made sense for the pushback range to be higher for the evolution because its shot was much more powerful, but for the sake of thousands of players' mental stability, it was best to reduce it back. These were some pretty hefty nerfs. Some thought this was a little overboard, but I don't think most people cared. The fact it still didn't die to arrows would keep it strong, but it wouldn't be the dominant evolution after this. A few weeks into August, the card was pretty much back to where it was after the June buff, but before the evolution was added. This is pretty much where the evolved Firecracker would stay for a while, but come October, you would see regular Firecracker a lot more in the competitive scene. You saw a resurgence of the infamous Hog Earthquake deck replacing Valkyrie with the new evolved Knight, and this split lane pressure Swarm Bait deck with the new evolved Royal Recruits. Both regular and evolved Firecracker had unique roles in this meta and saw about the same amount of play. It was a Firecracker heavy meta. Despite the nerfs, she was as relevant as ever. The meta was still unstable from the poor implementation of evolutions though. It shifted every month when new ones were added, so even one month later when we got evolution archers and a new card, you saw a fairly big dip in Firecracker usage. The next notable development would come in February 2024, after Supercell let players use two evolutions in a single deck rather than just one. With only 13 evolutions in the game as of that month, it encouraged a lot more usage for every evolution. Pretty much overnight, Evolved Firecracker's use rate doubled because it wasn't competing with evolutions for space as much in the deck anymore. But as a consequence, non-Evolved Firecracker was basically never used in competitive play anymore. There weren't really any new decks with Firecracker forming, but rather the already popular decks that used non-evolved Firecracker were using the evolved one now. However, there was another problem, being the new evolved Bomber, which dropped right as the second evolution slot did. Evolved Bomber had the same advantage Firecracker did, which was being able to deal quick damage to the tower from the bridge. Plus, it had a faster hit speed, cost one less elixir, and only took one cycle to get to. The only real disadvantages was that it couldn't hit air and it died to arrows, but that didn't really matter as much when going for some quick cheap tower damage. Sure, Firecracker was a more reliable defense, but its primary function was taking down towers, and that's what mattered most. Firecracker's rates dwindled for months thanks to Bomber. By April, it had the lowest win rate of any evolution, being stuck in that spot where it's alright in a few somewhat popular decks, but terrible outside of them. As the environment filled with more and more evolutions, it got more and more boxed out. It might have been alright to leave it alone given the circumstances, but the devs decided to give it a rework anyway in May 2024. Its spark durations would be increased by half a second each, and now any enemy troop standing inside of one would move 15% slower, just like poison. These attack buffs would be at the cost of some hit points though. More specifically, a vault firecracker would now have the exact number of hit points as a regular firecracker, meaning arrows were finally a reliable hard counter. This was probably the most advocated change since the evolution's addition, so you can imagine there was a lot of excitement surrounding this announcement. Even though it did get some crazy buffs, everyone knew that it dying to arrows was a huge blow. Now it was better in a scenario where the opponent didn't have arrows, but Firecracker wasn't the only evolution whose health was decreased. Following these changes, that spell would hard counter so many evolutions, leading to an explosion of arrows usage. Ultimately, this rework didn't make a difference in the card's performance. However, given they were able to make it less frustrating to go against, I'd say the rework was still a success. The amount of play it was seeing was fine. The main decks it was appearing in were still Hog Rider decks, but Goblin Drill was fairly popular in June, so it wasn't uncommon to see those two paired together. And since the Dagger Duchess Tower Troop's prominence was contributing to the popularity of Siege decks as a response to it, you saw Firecracker appear in those decks occasionally thanks to its ability to deal damage to towers without needing to cross the bridge. The following month, you saw a lot more Firecracker with Goblin Drill thanks to the Goblin Drill evolution, and less play in Siege following the Dagger Duchess nerf. She never seemed like the best choice since her win rate was still low, but a solid chunk of top players continued to find success with her. And nothing has really changed since then. As of October 2024, she still has a below average use rate in challenges with by far the lowest win rate of any evolution. She doesn't appear on the most popular deck list anymore and is hardly seen in the top 200. She's no longer seen in a wide variety of decks, mostly just in Hog Mighty Miner Cycle. It seems like she has these bursts where she's seen in some meta decks for a month or two, then goes right back to being present only in Hog Mighty Miner. Which isn't the worst position for a card to be in, but it's not ideal. For how much hate she's garnered though, I'm surprised she's been able to not get nerfed into the ground for this long. I don't think there are going to be any more major developments in the Firecracker's journey, at least not anytime soon. She certainly still has her group of core haters, but she's way less of a problem than she was for most of her past. 
Even though she's not seen a ton in competitive play anymore, she's still used in around 30% of decks on ladder. It's undoubtedly still an extremely fun and simple card to use, and can be a nightmare if you don't know how to properly deal with it. Even if you never spent money on the game, her evolved version has been pretty easy to obtain. For example, in February 2024 for Valentine's Day, Supercell gave away a free evolution of the player's choice, and unsurprisingly, the most popular pick was in fact Firecracker, where millions of people chose her. And there have been multiple other opportunities since then to get her for free. If there's more evolution giveaways in the future, I'm sure thousands of new players will get their hands on this menace. Well, maybe not if the Mega Knight evolution is a choice. Anyway though, thank you guys so much for listening, let me know which card's history you want to see next, and I'll catch you later.